Hello, everybody. My name is Alexey Krabarov. I'm the founder and organizer of Bay Area AI. And we have a joint meetup tonight uh, at D2IQ, a well-known company uh, basically doing data orchestration. And I think it's very fitting. We have a joint meetup of multiple meetups. And the topic of this meetup is machine learning models and specifically uh, versioning and monitoring. We have two talks. Uh, and uh, the monitoring is with Hydrosphere and Stepan Pushkarev, and the versioning is with Manasi Vartak, who is the CEO of Verta yeah. AI, uh, recent startup. Uh, mm -hmm. So welcome, Manasi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Why did you decide to start Verta and what this is all about? Absolutely. Um, so I am a uh, technical founder. Um, I did my PhD at MIT, worked on data systems all throughout grad school. So one of the systems I built was ModelDB. We started looking at how data scientists work and what were challenges. And that was around the time when AlexNet and all of the deep learning uh, mm -hmm. models were really becoming significant. Mm -hmm. and we realized that the things that we take granted for software, like Git type versioning systems, deployment, debugging, were all missing for models. and mm -hmm. so. We ended up building ModelDB, which became a popular open source project, and mm -hmm. then Verda evolved from that. Nice. Uh, and so uh, I'm curious, uh, so you were a researcher at MIT, That's right. right? Was were you a software engineer before that? How this specific topic came up as your yeah. research topic? Um, so I did. I worked at Microsoft between undergrad and grad school. Mm -hmm. um, my PhD was also in the database group, from which came Postgres and Vertica. So, like, we built systems, um, and so it just we write software all day. <laughs> so nice. Actually, nice. That was a clear and natural direction. Nice, yeah. but obviously, uh, machine learning models are very different beasts. Mm -hmm. Do you have specific interests in machine learning? Uh, how did this come about? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my interests are between data systems and ML. My mm -hmm. undergrad was CS and math, so I also write algorithms and things like that. I used to be part of the feed ranking team at Twitter, also worked on dynamic ad targeting at Google, so that was applied ML, and that gave a good balance to the systems building. And at Verda, um, my CTO actually comes from Twitter and NVIDIA. We both work together at Twitter. So like, it also brings a lot of significant chops um, in the productionization of models. Very cool. Very cool. So the, you're kind of bridging these two worlds, right? So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm curious, mm -hmm. right? Because you're clearly in the camp of software engineers, mm -hmm. which most of our Meetup members are, right? Perfect. And so Perfect. We, <laughs> we kind of, so the, the theory which kind of most I see working in, in Bay Area, if you have a working company, Mm -hmm. You know, machine learning is a commodity. You take it over the shelf. You are not, you know, uh, working with Jeff Hinton on next mm -hmm. uh, deep learning iteration. You <laughs> yeah, are yeah. a grant uh, deploying models, making sure they make money or don't lose money, yes. and and your job depends on them yeah. being, you know, in production, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, the versioning is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It like, sounds like music to mm -hmm. our ears because mm -hmm. if something bad happens, you need to find out. And so, like, we understand Git and and continuous integration, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. so, but but a lot of data science. Development is mm -hmm. done by folks who do Python and uh, do it in a notebook. They're yeah. not in production. So how do you address those guys? Like how do you interact with engineers versus data scientists versus business owners right. who right. will see all these metrics in the end? 100%. Um, so for us, the fundamentals of our product don't change. Uh, for us, a model version consists of, as I will talk about, the code, the data, config and environment together. Now, if I'm a data scientist, I am in a Jupyter Notebook or R Studio, mm -hmm. and the way that they access our product is via very easy to use APIs or GUIs. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a software engineer or you're a DevOps person, then you care about your SLAs, throughput, how's your model behaving, then you can access it directly through Kubernetes, sort of kube control, um, use the YAML files, integrate it into Jenkins, do the software root. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a business owner, then you're only looking at our GUI uh, part of the product. So it is the same fundamentals, very similar to say GitHub. If you only look at the UI, then maybe a business owner or project manager can understand it. Mm -hmm. Versus if you're a software developer, you have the command line and you're doing merges and pulls all the time. So here's kind of a very naive scenario, mm -hmm. right? So I'm a business owner and yeah. I run an online shop, right? Mm -hmm. And my data scientists are kind of doing they're upselling customers on shopping carts, mm -hmm. right? Uh, or they're basically like, I'm watching if they're coming back. And so, you know, the, the model basically does it. And so I have a metric, how much did I upsell 
each checkout. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and and so so can you kind of can we as the field as an mm -hmm. industry reach the point where I am the shop owner. I have mm -hmm. no idea what data science system programmers are doing. I wake up in the middle of the night. I watch how much uh, every checkout is upselling, and suddenly, because the previous night some somebody messed up and the model is really bad, and like upselling really mm -hmm. plunged, mm -hmm. can I push a button to roll back? Like, is it at the level where mm -hmm. you can give this tool to a business mm -hmm. owner mm -hmm. who watches a clear business metric mm -hmm. and he will be alerted, or is it the job of an engineer? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, are we going to involve some, somebody who understands the business metric? Mm -hmm. Should it be a page or duty level thing for mm -hmm. an engineer, or can you let like reach the point where a business owner will be able to to say no, this doesn't work, mm -hmm. and because you know he cares, he wakes up and he does a rollback. Is it possible? Right. Um, I would say that in this sense, ML models are not different from existing software. If I'm a product owner and say it's my mobile app and I see something wrong with it, I don't mm -hmm. go to a dashboard and roll it back. I mm -hmm. alert my engineer to do it. Yes. So I don't think ML models are any different. We would escalate it via pager duty. Yes. They can provide input into why they think a metric is off, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we don't think they're the right people to roll back a production system. Okay, okay, cool. And so I'm kind of uh, very curious about this specialization, right? So not only we get a bunch of MLOps startups mm -hmm. dealing with machine learning models, now we have, you know, uh, monitoring, versioning, and mm -hmm. tuning mm -hmm. as specialties mm -hmm. of different companies. Mm -hmm. So do you think, and obviously if we, if we go this route, then we mm -hmm. need standardization. Mm -hmm. Like we need yeah, to really yeah, yeah. agree what these models are. Yeah. Because, right, like if we really want, like do you think it's going that way that, you know, we have, or like languages to describe machine models, mm -hmm. are we gonna go this route of, of kind of, a thousand flowers, or is it going to be more pl platforms with their own closed tools? Because, like, for if mm -hmm. if it's standardization and, and open market, then mm -hmm. it's really good for startups. Right, right. If it's all kind of inside uh, things, and then it's Azure, mm -hmm. Amazon, mm -hmm. and Google. Like, mm -hmm. where do you think this is going? Are we going to see more specialization or not? Um, I would say we're going towards standardization, mm -hmm. and we have been involved in some of these efforts through Model DB, through Verda where we're trying to find what does a model need to have with it? What kind of descriptors does it need to have? Mm -hmm. How does a model package get defined and things like that? Mm -hmm. So I don't think, just as in software, we now have reached a conclusion on what a Jenkins file should look like. Right. Um, so we are gonna approach that stage with models. We're mm -hmm. just getting there slowly and the startups I think are providing a lot of impetus for that to happen. Is it gonna be a bunch of YAML? <laughs> yeah, the spacing in YAML just like, maybe that's not a great topic. Yeah, right. Right can we come up with something like typed um, so we can check if yeah, it's correct? Yeah, right? that would be wonderful. That would be, nice. uh, that'd be wonderful. Yes, yes. Um, yes. But I think Kubernetes has done a really got good job in popularizing YAML as well as having APIs. And yes. we've pulled some of those design sort of um, ideas from there, which would be working well. Very cool. So, what is the hardest challenge for you, and you know, left for the next year? Like, what's the mm -hmm. your current, you know, what keeps you up at night? What do you want to, to solve in this kind of coming year for Virgil? Um, when you're a small startup, there's lots of challenges, <laughs> as you might imagine. Um, this mo this field moves very fast, as you might imagine, um, and so there's always either a new algorithm, new type of doing things, um, or there are new companies out there. So. For us, it's always finding what is the thing that we can do especially well compared mm -hmm. to other companies. And at the end of the day, for us, are we making a difference for the customers that we work for? Mm -hmm. um, if we're moving the needle for them, then that's a huge one for us, and that's what we'll focus on. Sounds awesome. We wish you all the luck, and I'm uh, looking forward to my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.